For the last four years, I've hunted Africa with Jeff Rand on this trip. We're split in two groups. My brother is hunting with Russell, his PH, and James and I are hunting with Jeff Rand. He sort of developed James as the great hunter he is today, and this is our first year to hunt dangerous game with Jeff. Well, on the buffalo stalks, it's not like you walk in and shoot one. It's that you have to look for the wind, you have to be careful with the noise, and it's very adrenaline, and you have to look for a mature bull with no soft bosses. It's very exciting. It's dangerous. I mean, that's what it is. It's, we're hunting dangerous game, and I've always tell the client, uh, you want to be looking up and, and looking beyond every bush, every tree. As a professional hunter, you know, I'm the last line of defense and, and I have to protect everybody there, the trackers as well as the, as the clients. So you want to stay in close, keep tight. Just don't move, he's just gonna, he's just watching us. We were moving in on these Cape Buffalo and it takes some time to get, get in there on these herds and you're working these herds, trying to get in and a situation and pick out a large bull that you'd want to take and all that effort is, you know, typically can be a half an hour or an hour to three, four hours. Lots of, lots of bulls, but not, nothing really big, so it's a good time because they stand and look at you. Yeah. But it's just getting a bit late. Well, we're midway through our hunt. We've had pretty good luck. Uh, had a thrill of having my son get to Cape Buffalo. That's his uh, first dangerous game, and it's a lot of fun. And I'm going to be looking for a buffalo myself. I've been seeing a number of them and trying to find a pretty nice one and uh, enjoy James's company and watch him hunt dangerous game and we got some days left we have a good chance to kill a nice buffalo I'm hoping to find one and it's been a great hunt so far and love Tanzania and Jeff's done a great job with us so we're on our way to a good hunt. This area's got a lot of buffalo in it. We've seen buffalo just about every morning and afternoon that we've been out hunting. Last year we took a bull here that was over 48 inches, so it's a really prime buffalo area. Most of these bulls we're hunting uh, for trophies now are gonna be old bulls, they, they broom down a little bit. Uh, Trophy bulls are going to have big, hard bosses and, and decent spreads. In this area, we've got some bulls that, you know, well into their 40s. You know, one of the things that's come up uh, over this last uh, three weeks is we've had two incidents where professional hunters have been injured by Cape Buffalo. I think it made him realize, you know, it's not just hunting planes game now. There's consequences when you hunt dangerous game and you got to make good shots. You know, you're always taking a chance with the wind, you're cutting the wind, and uh, sometimes the wind will change, shift on you, and, and the hurdle will bolt. I smell this. Just 
what you might get come out. Wind changed. Well, I didn't see him. So. We saw her to Buffalo. Uh, we got within 15 yards when we snuck in on them and they winded us eventually and we didn't see any good bulls in the herd but it was just as exciting getting in on those bulls. Well we uh, got in some bulls, uh, a big herd yesterday evening and saw a really big bull in there, probably 45, maybe a bit bigger even. Um, we'd seen him about three days ago as well in the same area. Uh, this morning we got back on the tracks Tracked him about uh, five or six kilometers, uh, four hours total. Um, got up on him, but it was midday and they were, you know, they were spread out, they were kind of thick stuff, um, but uh, he's a really big bull and worth spending some time on. Buffalo hunting, especially these big herds, is you're kind of getting the wind right. You got to have it right to get in close. You probe in and you look, and if you see a big bull, you try and get set up. If you don't, you pull back, kind of try another angle, trying to see as many of those animals out of that herd as you can. trophy hunting, that's what you have to do, unless you get really lucky and that first probe in on that herd, there's a big bull, bull standing there looking at you, but it doesn't happen like that very often. You see that bull there? They're just moving through. Just get on that bull. Jim was going to try and take him with a 470 double, open sights, but it was just a little bit far, I felt, and uh, I talked him into using the 375 H&H &H with the scope, had a little bit longer range. Just get on him. No, it's not him. He's moved through. I can't see him. No, he's gone. I can't see him. Off to the far left, I saw this big old bull, and he was obviously the herd bull because he kept looking around and he got a little bit nervous and maybe even smelt us at one point. Jim, there's that bull. Just pick up your gun, just slowly. You see him, you see him through there. That's the good one. Can you see him? Yeah. Okay. Okay, Jim, that, that bull's turned. He's looking at us. He's broadside. Yeah. But there's a cow watching us, so just be careful. We got a chance to move in on a herd. We got in real close to him, but we're shooting maybe 80 yards, and that's pushing a little bit on open sides, especially this bull that we wanted to get. He was mixed up in some brush and stuff. Take the 375. You see him there? Yeah. He's turned. Okay, he's broadside. He's looking right at you. Go ahead, take him right on the shoulder. Okay. Here we go. 
go. Okay, grab the devil. Let's go. Just grab the devil. Uh, money, take that 375. Okay, let's go. Let's get up on him. Made a great shot, uh, softened those bullet, hit him right on the shoulder. That bull went maybe 50 yards and he was down, one shot kill. Okay, just stay up here with me. You can hear him there, he's down, hear him. I was fortunate, made a clean shot where it needs to be and the bull took the hit, spun around and ran maybe 40, 50 yards and rolled up in a circle and started bellowing. When they start bellowing, you know they're all washed up and he died right there. One shot. <laughs> he's pretty good bull. No, he's a nice bull. Being a backup guy on my dad's Cape Buffalo made me feel like a PH and stuff. We walked in and one shot, I taught him everything I know. Nice bull. He's the best bull in that herd. Perfect, you know, sort of, it's a third, a third, a third. So you're right at the yeah. two thirds, one third line on the body. It's perfect. Well, that 375 has got, a, that's enough gun to yeah. hit him right place. And, and, and the right bullets, too. You know, that soft nose, yeah. the Woodley bullet did a great job. And uh, I mean, he went 50 yards. And... Well, James, that was fun sharing it with you. Yeah. Do you got any pointers to point out to me and I can improve my hunting? You got lucky. Oh, I got lucky. Okay, well, lucky. I was lucky to have you here. It was a lot of fun. And these are, bulls are exciting to hunt. And um, lots of things going on, and lots of things to pay attention to, and it's fun to share it with my son. And so far, I'm thrilled to be here, and everything's been happening really well. These hunting endeavors in these kind of situations takes a huge logistical effort, a huge physical effort, mental, all of the Blasios, and my brother and I and, and James uh, want to make sure that everybody realizes and, and, and understands our appreciation for the care and the genuine thrill they get out of you having a great hunting experience. And um, Jeff Rand has become quite a friend to me and James, and I think he's taken a lot of pride in uh, seeing James develop in the last four years. And myself too, I learned a lot as I've been hunting in Africa, and uh, Africa is a, is a wonderful experience, an experience of a lifetime.